in the days of food. Ibadan being the second largest city in Africa in terms of landmass and also the largest city in West Africa, had existed since early 1800s when different wars enraged Yoruba empires and kingdoms such as Oyo, Igbo, Shaki and so on. Find out in this story how did the name Ibadan came to be? What was the event that occurred that forced the founders of Ibadan to live on the Eve for years? How did the eulogy Ibadan Omo Abikara Fokomu came about? There has always been great empires in the southwest of Nigeria before Ibadan, some of which include Isein, Igbo, Shaki, Iresa, Oje, with Oyoile as the strongest and Oyo was respected for this. This enabled Oyo to be able to keep Yoruba states in control until it was afflicted by internal war when Bashon Ga seized power and Abiodun waged war to oust Ga. The result of this was that the tribute paying states like Egba, Numpe and Bogu devoted and gained independence. These defeats also came with blockade of supply of horses which were the backbones of Oyo's cavalry. All this coupled with the growth of trade in firearms to Yoruba states made Oyo leveled with other states, and so the whole of Yoruba scrambled for new political and economic power in such wars such as Owu, Ijaye, Ikitiparapo, BTC, that left most of the Yoruba states in ruins, all between 1821 and 1893. It was during this war that the Fulani Jihadis were on their jihad campaign in West Africa. They inflicted Oyo and killed the then Alafin, and so ended Oyoile, the first Oyo, in 1835. In years before, precisely 1829, Lagelu from Ife and other warriors from Oyo and the Jebu had came to the south of Oyo to establish a war camp between the forest and plains, which translates a baudo in Yoruba. At this time, those who are lucky to survive wars in Yoruba villages will sometimes meet themselves in the bush and ask them questions like, Ah, where is your dad? He has been killed. What about yours? Ah, I don't know. I just see myself here. So what do we do now? Ah, okay. I heard there is a place in a baudo where powerful soldiers camp. Let's go there. Maybe they can allow us to stay with them. If we are allowed, then that means we are safe. So this went on and on, and soon about them became a small village until something happened. A Gugu festival was held in this village. A Gugu means masquerade, and they are considered to be dead forefathers who return to earth each year to bless their progeny. As the celebration was going on, a masquerade was accidentally destroyed. The secrets of who was underneath the robe was revealed, and so the women and children mocked these masquerades. The resultant effect of this was that, then Alafin ordered that the village be destroyed. Lagelu, the head of the village, was old and frail then, and could not stop the attack, so he and some of his people fled to a nearby hill. On this hill, they spent years hiding and survived on a foot called Uru and snails. They got tired of this so they managed to cultivate the land. They made corn and millet into pap, known as a core, and they ate it with roasted snails. There was no plate or spoon for them to take the pap, so they improvised by using the snail's shell to drink the liquidify a core. And that is where the eulogy of Mo Ajorosun Africa around Fokom came from. Ibadan Majorosun, Omo Kure, Bereki Otowo, Bitin Koni Leni Kalejo, Ela Yele Lolo Mizi Daru Tomo Lalu Kwa Wamu, Ase Jire Lo Mi Abu Eni Le Badan, Omo Je Gwinja He Kara Wama Fi Ikara Mu Fori Mu. How did this story relate with him Khan, Ibadan King's daughter, betrothed to Olowu, that Olowu couldn't find something else to sacrifice but her? How did the Bado manage to save the whole of Yoruba land from destruction? Making a video like this could take a full 5 days from researching to writing and production 
Not having people to view it is so much heartbreaking. So I beg you to share this video on your Facebook, Instagram and WhatsApp. You can find part 2 of this video in the description or by searching the same title.